God bless you. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever your time zone is. God bless you today. We are in the series Teaching on the Divine Fullness. I am so excited to be with you here today to share the word of the Lord and what the Lord has given me to share with you this week. Uh, quick recap. Last week, we were looking at John 10.10, 10, how the Holy Spirit um, broke that scripture down for me to understand the plan of the enemy versus the plan of the believer. And that word really um, shifted something dynamic in my spirit. And today the Holy Spirit has um, brought me to um, teaching on um, the still in the divine fullness as the Holy Spirit has given me what he has desired for me to release to you today. I have not been um, teaching on any specific area of these before. So the Holy Spirit has given me fresh download each and every time I come to you. And I thank him for his impartation of wisdom, glory to God, and understanding. And I believe during the season of last month, there was so much that God had revealed to me that I didn't even realize until this very time now that it's beginning to come into manifestation. Let us pray before I start. Father, today we honor you. God, we just lift up your name and we exalt you high in all the earth. We praise you for your greatness, for you are majesty, kingdom authority. We pray today in the name of Jesus, that the word of God will take full effect to every believer, those who hear, even non-believers. And I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ, lives will be changed by the power of the word. So we pray today for inspiration, glory to God, my God, illumination for transformation of your word. Let it be so. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say amen. Glory to God. God I'm excited for the word that I'm going to release with you today. The Holy Spirit brought me to an area where I'm looking at um, divine fullness. This is the area that we're covering this month in the ministry. And today we're looking about timing. It's all about timing. Put in the comments, it's all about timing. Timing is a key factor for a lot of things. Sometimes we go for an interview and the time we went for the interview, we may have interviewed well in our eyes, but when we go back and get feedback, it wasn't how we really put over what we were looking for. And I remember years ago when I went for a job and I applied for numerous jobs, the job I really wanted, I actually nearly didn't get it but because the interview before that they gave me feedback this is all about timing and we're talking about divine fullness and the timing factor was when they told me they said when we asked you how you felt about the position and what you were going to be doing you answered like you didn't really have an interest and when I started thinking about it I said wow that is so true so when I went for the last interview which was the job that I got which I wanted I spoke exactly how I would bring myself and be in that job, how I would work and I would say minister and do everything that needs to be done. They offered me the job. They say my passion, how I spoke, because timing is key. I had feedback and I knew exactly then what was for me. But at the time, I didn't apply the principles of it for my last interview. But the one that I really needed to, I was able to do it. So timing 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 is key so today i'm teaching on the divine fullness keys i'm teaching on keys 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 everybody put in the comment keys keys are essential and they're important for everything you have keys for your car you have keys for your house you have keys um to access certain lock boxes my god i don't know what i'm speaking to you have keys for areas like you have a p.o box you have a key there are designated keys that have a certain number on them. You might not be able to see them, but there are numbers that the keys are assigned to certain areas. Not every key works for every door. My God, did I say that? Not every key works for every door. Every key is assigned to a specific lock that will open, glory to God. And I believe this word today is gonna help somebody because the Holy Spirit needed for me to release it. Everything else, you know, I don't really want to say that I plan a strategic plan and say, this is what I'm going to do. But I asked the Holy Spirit to inspire me for what he wants for me to release. And this is what he said. So keys are essential. Keys are also a key factor for opportunities. 
both accepted and foregone. They hold much promise and potential, but are also responsibility and expectation. Now, if you think about this, and I'm going to break this down, I'm not going to be long, but I have a few pointers. If you think about it, someone that's given a job as a caretaker, and that word may, you may say, well, someone that's a janitor, whoever it is, they have keys. The keys they have gives them access. It gives them responsibility and an expectation. So what happens is they use the key to go into the building. The key that they have access, my God, I'm trying to help somebody. The key they have access to go into the building, they go into the building and they have access then to a lot of places because they are given keys. Their responsibility means that they use the keys responsibly to do what they need to do. And the expectation is that they do it. I hope somebody heard that. Keys are responsibility. So a janitor in a position of responsibility are given a set of keys. The keys are allowing the janitor or the caretaker to go in, clean, take care of whatever needs to be done. What happens then is the responsibility is for that person to lock up. The responsibility is for the job to be done. So there is a responsibility and an expectation with keys. Promise they hold potential and they have um, opportunities that are both accepted and foregone. So sometimes we didn't accept at that time, we miss it. But then when we come back and God gives what he needs for you to have, you recognize that it was a missed opportunity at that time. So the Lord led me to look at the meaning key. And I looked this up and I'm going into biblical reference as the Holy Spirit gave me. I'm just releasing. And the Lord led me to look at the meaning of key. The key is also spoken figuratively and symbolically in the Bible as a sign of authority. Hallelujah. Authority is so important for us to understand that as believers, that our responsibility and what God expects of us is so important. So, keys are a sign in the Bible, symbolic, figuratively speaking, as a sign of authority. If somebody gives you keys, when you go and close on a house, you get the keys. You get all the keys that belong to the house, every door. If there are windows that have locks, you get those keys. That means the authority you have been given is that you have access to that house. I'm trying to help somebody. You have access. So, the prophet Isaiah talked about the key of the house of David. I'm going somewhere. Just work with me today. In Isaiah 22, 22, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and no one shall open. Shall I read that again? Because I don't want you to miss absolutely anything. So the prophet Isaiah, we, we looked at, when we looked in September, we spoke about um, the gifts. I don't know if we did prophets, but the gift and the anointing and what God has for us in the nine gifts operating in the church. So Isaiah prophet talked about the key for the house of David, Isaiah 22, 22. The key for the house of David, he said, I will lay upon his shoulder. Think about your shoulders. Every morning I pray and I cover my shoulders and I, and I, and I, and I always think when I do that, that the weight of the anointing, the weight of what God has on me rests heavily on my shoulders. And you may say, well, why would that be? But when you're carrying something that God is giving you, there is a type of weight that you cannot even explain to someone that's not carrying it, how you feel. So he said, I will lay upon his shoulder. That means there is a responsibility so that he shall open. That means we're talking about keys and accessibility, divine fullness. He shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and none shall open. He was a sign of authority for a trusted steward to keep keys. So a master's possession and dispense them accordingly. This means that keys for the kingdom represent authority. So what we're looking at here is, and let me just go back real brief to that. When I read this about what Isaiah spoke and said, the house of David, I will lay upon his shoulder so that he shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut. What God has opened up for you, no one can shut it. Glory to God. And what God has shut, no one. You see, we question and try to work out things where we don't have an idea 
but even a knowledge of who God is. He is God. He does not need our permission to do what he does and what he needs to do. And what God brought to me was the fact that, and I'm going to continue reading that, is that I had access to some keys going back. The keys were given to me as a sign, my God, of promise and potential. Now, at the time, I didn't see what was being done. There was a transaction, glory to God, in the spirit realm, glory, hallelujah. In the spirit realm, I already received the access that I prayed for, for so many things that God is doing. So when I was given, my God, the physical key, it was a confirmation and it was the manifestation of what had already taken place in the spirit realm. So what happened then was I received the keys which gave me and has given me full access to all that I need. So what door is open because of the accessibility of what had already taken place in the heavenly realm, I now activate in the physical. So the key gives me access. My God, the key gives me responsibility and there is also a level of expectation with having access and the key. So it means that I can go in when I need to. I can come out when I need to. I can do what I need to do because I have access and I have the keys. Keys give you utterance in the spirit realm to be able to move according to what God desires for your life. So let's continue here. So the steward kept the keys to the master's possessions and dispensed them accordingly. This means that through the keys of the kingdom, Peter was being given both authority and responsibility. In David, he said, I give to thee the house of David, the key, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens the doors, no one will be able to close them. And when he closes the doors, no one will be able to open them. Think about the position that David had. Think about it. When you go back and read this, you're going to ask yourself, well, what does this mean? The relevance of the position that David was in was very high. In a position where he was the one that was able to dispense. He held the master's keys. What God gives you, it already takes place in the spiritual realm. It already takes place up there. So when you see it happening, you don't say, well, how did this happen? I've told people, don't be wowing me because I'm telling you what God is doing. There is no surprise. He has already done it. You see, what happens is we have been praying and we've been praying so much that we forget that God answers prayers. <laughs> so we keep going in. Sometimes we shout. He's not there. We don't have to shout. I'm talking about divine fullness. I'm talking about the keys, having access to the opportunities, the doors that you have seen closed. God wanted them closed. Hence why, no matter what you do, they cannot be opened because God wanted them closed. But the ones that he has opened for you, you are walking through because he'd already orchestrated and released them in the heavenly realms. So then on the earthly, you will see them moving forth and somebody will say, how did you do that? What was your method? What was, what did you do? Who did you speak to? Because they want to see what they can do. But what God has opened for you, no one can close it because it's access to the realm of the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So David had a level of authority. My God, he had the keys to the master's possession that he dispensed them accordingly. Look at the level of authority. Look at the level of power that we have to understand that God places on us. So the emphasis for me and the keys and the level of authority and what God gives and allows to happen shows me that God is already mindful of everything and he already has answered prayers and he's fully in control and I cannot stop what he is doing. He said, whatever he has ordained, he will maintain it. 
he will bring it forth. He who began a good work, he is able to complete it. There is nothing that you have started that God will not allow to come to fruition. If it's him and it's him through you that you're working, he will allow you to come through in what he has for your life that is predestined for you to see manifest. Glory to God. So this is the highest position in the royal court. When doors are open and no one else can access them but you. And I've worked in places over the years that people have had doors that are locked when you're working in certain institutions. As the Holy Spirit is bringing this to me. In a, in a jail, in a prison, in certain institutions with mental health, they don't have doors open. They don't have kitchens unlocked. Why? Safety. They look at safety because it's not a matter that the person behind the door is um, saying, well, we don't, we're not worried, we're not at risk, but it's what happens if the other person gets access to certain things. So you have other people that may be hurt because other people have intentions, bad intentions. And this is in the physical. Look at the spiritual people attack you for no reason. They don't, don't like you for no reason. Think about the fact that when you're in an institution and there are other people in there, why do you think they have maximum secure Units. Why do you think they have places where they lock people in and no one else can? Why? Because they're trying to protect them. So imagine when a door is locked, a lot of times it's for safety. I'm just talking to you about the physical things. So in a jail, in, in a high maximum security, in certain institutions, the reason why the doors are locked and one person, glory to God, has keys and access is because they're trusting with the responsibility to be able to open and close that door. And the expectation is no one will go in unless they have been given authorization. My God. And have then been given the keys to access that area. So I'm just telling you, when people walk with a bunch of keys, you sometimes think they're important. A lot of times they are because they have access to rooms that you cannot get into. This is a whole nother topic, whole nother lesson. And I'm, I'm looking and hearing what God is saying. There are areas that are, Oh my God, that are off limits to you until God accesses you through his divine permission to go through. Glory to God. So the key of David and the authority that comes to the key bearer is mentioned above and again in Revelation in the context of spiritual doors. The words of the Holy One, the true one, and the one who has the key of David who opens and no one will shut and who shut and no one will open to Revelation 3, 7. I'm just confirming, as the Holy Spirit's given me, this is what the word he's given me, of Isaiah 22, 22. The keys the, the, on the shoulder of David rested, glory to God, the authority and the master's possessions, all of the keys that he held meant that he had authority to be able to open doors and close them. In the, the physical, I want you to look at that aspect, but in the spiritual it speaks again about spiritual doors. There are sometimes we have to understand, I'm going to keep moving in this. And if the Holy Spirit wants me to come back and finish this off next week, I will do. There are doors that you need to know what you are going in through because you may get some keys. And I'm saying this, but years ago, somebody could have said to me, Marcia, I have this for you and I I'm going to give you access to it. But it wasn't the right time. So it didn't open. I remember a few months ago, I was given the opportunity to um, accept an offer for something. And I kept saying, I'm not feeling this right now. But he kept coming up to me that I didn't feel comfortable. So I said, no. It took me a few months and the person, I said, no, not at this time. And months later, I get a different opportunity the holy spirit already sanctioned it because he provided the way i said yes and every door opened after that what am i saying you have to understand spiritually what god has already focused what god has already ordained what's happening in the spiritual has already taken place it now needs to happen you're looking at it as being transactional it needs to happen. I need to see it happen right now. But God is saying, you need to trust me in this process. And I'm teaching today with you about divine fullness. And the keys always not necessarily are a good thing to accept. Sometimes you have to wait 
to hear what the Lord is saying. So the purpose, and I'm going to close this out, I'm going to pray, about divinely ordained by God is when the enemy wants to limit your potential. When the enemy wants to stop the promise that God has in you. In Matthew 16, 19, Jesus says to Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you know when we pray? Do you know when we speak? Do you know the level of power and authority that God has given us? What purpose are we serving? There is a divine order on our lives. And I've been listening to some teachings in the last week intensely looking at what God has for my life that the enemy has tried to hold up. And I've been reading in Daniel 10, 10, I looked at the fact that Daniel was praying and he prayed and the archangel came and said, for 10 days or for how many days you've been praying, your prayer was held up because the prince of Persia, the prince of the air, the prince of darkness, whatever prince of principalities, whatever it is, try to stop you. But I've released it so that you will go forth. That's my teaching for today. I needed to understand that you have to stand in the authority of the word of God. The word of God will give you clarity. When you hear what the Lord is saying, you will move in an accordance to his will and to his way. If I was to follow my feelings and my emotions right here and now, I would not be teaching. Neither would I be teaching this. Because if you be honest, there are days you just don't feel like doing it. But the Holy Spirit has told me that this is an assignment that is unusual for you out of your character. And you may say, well, what do you mean? You're always doing something. No, this has pushed me to another level. Why? Because God has said, I want you to stretch yourself in a position to understand that I have greater for you and the accessibility and the keys that I have given you for the opportunity to move forward in divine fullness is right in your hand. And what is resting in your hand is you have the authority to walk as a kingdom believer and access what I have given you. So if God has given you purpose in your life. Don't allow the enemy to stop your destiny. And I'm getting ready to pray. But this week, during the course of the week, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me on the aspect of the enemy is speaking so loud that he's beginning to annoy people. He's speaking at the point where it's, it's like a frequency pitch. And you're hearing all this noise and you're saying, well, I don't need to hear from you. Be quiet. Don't even let me hear you whisper because everything you're saying is a lie. You are a liar and you have nothing to say that we want to hear. So understand your authority. Know your legal right. Know your position. As I spoke the other day, use the word of God. Use the Bible. It is the word. It will equip you. And it will bring you to a point where you understand who you are in Christ and your level of authority. I'm praying today that this word has encouraged you understanding the keys and accessibility that you have, what God has given you, what doors are closed, what doors need to be open, how you access through the spirit realm, what God needs for you to have in this season. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we honor you today. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing us to come before your presence one more time. We pray in the name of Jesus for your power and anointing to illuminate in our lives, bring greater clarity in areas where we have fallen short, bring strength to the areas where we have been weak. And God, what doors you have opened for us for whatever reason, time and season that we walk through, allow us to understand the authority that you have given us, the keys, the accessibility to the greater realm of your glory. So I pray today, God, that you give us wisdom deeper knowledge, glory to God, and understanding, and to be empowered by your word. Cover every believer listening today, and every non-believer, and every person that has been struggling to understand who they are in the word of God. My God, in Matthew 16, 19, Jesus says to Peter, I will give you the keys, my God, of the kingdom, glory to God of heaven, that whatever you bind, evil shire, on earth will be bound, and whatever you loose will be loose. So give us the authority in the spirit realm to be able to understand that when we stand, 
We have power to bind and power to loose according to the word of God. So we pray in the name of Jesus for strength and power to move forward with the authority of the believer. We thank you, God. We praise you and we honor you. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and say amen and amen. God bless you today. So glad you were able to join me. And as we continue to move forward in this series of the divine fullness, I'm praying that we understand that in the spiritual realm of the spirit, there are areas that we have seen God has done so many things for us. It hasn't manifest because your faith is lacking. Let your faith work and move in power and the authority of the believer. God bless you. As I pray for you, you pray for me. We're going to watch God take us higher. God bless you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.